Hi everyone, I'm Vicky Ann, founder of Creative Recruiters. Welcome to the Creative Studio Insider. My special guest today is Georgia Carrington. Georgia is the Creative and Advertising Services Manager at the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions. Thanks for joining us, Georgia. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I, um, I could talk to you all day. Um, I've got so many questions to ask you, but let's start with um, you explaining to our listeners the purpose of the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions. Sure. Well, our purpose is to grow the state's economy. So we're focused on creating jobs for lots of people and on building thriving places and regions. Um, we also have a strong focus on building inclusive communities. It's, it's, it's a big department. I know that you have lots of different yes. internal stakeholders. What, um, what are those internal businesses that you're responsible for? Sure. Well, I look after the creative services team. So within my team, we have the design studio, we have a marketing team, branding and advertising governance. And then we service our department, our agencies and entities. So that would be all the business areas within our department, such as, you know, jobs and employment, for example. And then um, we have other entities like Global Victoria or Agricultural Victoria, Creative Vic, people like that. And then they all have um, initiatives and programs that sit underneath them. So we work with them too. Sometimes we also work from people outside our department. So people from say the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Yeah. A whole variety of people. Yeah, that it, it's, it's a massive, massive gig. Well, what's your overarching responsibility to all of them? Um, well, I think our role as service providers is to, we're, we're a central service essentially. So we're looking at developing really highly creative and effective communication. So from the design studio's perspective, um, we produce great communication, we solve problems, um, mm. we are focused on delivering really creative outcomes and, uh, and looking at, at a different way of delivering things so that it really connects with the Victorian community. Our job is also to make sure that we stay on brand. So everything that we work on must adhere to Brand Victoria. That's a really mm. important part. So people know that when they come to us, we'll solve all their problems and we'll have great <laughs> material developed and we'll get it out the door quickly. I love that, that you'll solve, solve all of their problems. If they're listening to this, they'll be throwing <laughs> Most them of them, you. <laughs> communication problems. <laughs> you, spent, you spent many years in retail before you actually made the, the mm -hmm. career-defining move really into government. Mm -hmm. What attracted yes. you to make that move? Sure. Well, really, it was around a few things. It was around the scale and diversity of government and also the opportunity to do something for the state too. Um, so the scale of government is incredible. And to be honest, it's not even until you're amongst it, you realise just how big it is. There are so many programs and deliverables. Mm. It's incredible. And within our department, that's even more so. So we're a really diverse department um, and, you know, we work as I said before, with such diverse groups of people that it's really interesting. So the content that we work on is fascinating. Um, and of course, you know, the, yeah, the government is just spectacularly big. So yeah. yeah, the opportunity to just touch on so many areas is fantastic. And when you work on things that you know are helping to deliver programs for Victoria, it really makes you think that your work is worthwhile. So there's a great sense of satisfaction in what we do. And what was one of the first things that you noticed about the, the, the standard and the breadth of the creative projects that you, you and your team would be working on? Well, to be honest, the first thing I thought was that the standard was incredibly high. Mm. It was really creative. Um, the responsibility that the designers have it was immense and the outputs were impressive, to say the least, I'd have to say. So um, I was really impressed when I came in and I think we've continued to build on that and that, you know, what we put out now is even better than it was previously. Mm. I know as a recruiter, um, as a company that's built um, a number of big internal teams inside of government organisations that 
you know, one of the, the tricks has been getting the high-end branding designers or the high-end copywriters and being able to <clears throat> on-sell that to them. I think that once they meet with you and they learn all about that, of course, they absolutely want the gig. Why has it been so important, do you think, to attract that level of designer or writer or marketer, do you think? Because ultimately it's about the standard. So we want mm. to put out the best possible material we can. And there's a great deal of trust that's placed upon us to come up with innovative solutions and really creative outcomes. I think people mistakenly think that government work is dry. It's not at all. I mean, no, we work on spectacular initiatives. The work is so creative and it's so diverse. I mean, we go across all channels. There's massive amounts of digital work. We're working on apps and websites and, you know, every kind of social channel possible. Um, we've got things from books to, you know, brochures. And yes, we have all of those, um, the office suite of things that people need to be able to use. That's the really sensible stuff. But our ability to enhance that, to elevate that to a higher standard, you know, we're only limited by our creativity. And so mm -hmm. we're continually being asked for more creative work, more creative work, make it better, make it more beautiful, make it look different, make it look not like government, you know. Um, mm. The brand Vic that we, we work under is incredibly flexible. So there is mm. a, an overarching brand that we need to work within. But the more distant you get from government, the um, more flexible it becomes. But to be honest, we're never even restricted by it anyway. It's got a huge colour palette. The, the core elements um, are so flexible that it's it's a great structure to work under. And uh, yeah, we have a really great time pushing the limits of what's possible. Yeah, and you do. And we get that feedback from our candidates all the time. It's, you know, it's the same brief. We just want to push it that little bit more, that little bit more, which is fantastic. What type of complex creative and branding projects could a, a studio manager who's considering a, a career in, in government um, mm. expect to be leading and managing. Can you give us some examples maybe? I know a lot of things are confidential, but can you give me an example of some of the things that you're working on now or maybe a week ago? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so from our department's perspective, um, we deliver a whole variety of things, but it's really common that we work on big branding projects. So there will be new entities set up or a new initiative or program. They're often, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth and they've got a huge remit and a huge audience. So we will work with that team right from the original, um, from it's all the visual elements mainly of the brand. Yeah. Um, so from the logo and the design elements, full color palette across all channels, all the digital, all the print, all of the internal elements, we'll develop that, we help to pitch it in, um, we'll deliver the style guides or the templating and then we actually deliver documents and collateral right through to sending them to print um, and it's or, or having them published and it, yeah, it's it's great. It's really exciting. And the government's working on all sorts of other um, new channels as well too that I kind of can't go too much into, but you know, mm. we're constantly expanding the creative services that we offer and we're always looking for more. So even recently we've been really doing a lot more animation too. So that's been really exciting, motion graphics and so on. It's lots of fun. And, and I think there's huge scope for that. Mm. And, you know, it, it has been an incredibly frantic time for you over the last 12 months as we've dealt with, with COVID. What mm. have been some of the highlights for you and your team during that time? Sure. Well, there have been lots. I mean, COVID sucked, quite frankly, obviously, and we, you know, we're still totally not did. yet. <laughs> but, you know, from our studio's perspective, um, we were living and breathing COVID for, for much mm. of last year, but you know, everything that you see on in cafe windows, um, out in the streets on shop windows, that's all, they're all items that we developed. So we developed a COVID brand and rolled that out and really helped to bring 
forward a consistency of communication that helped the Victorian public understand what the messages were and where they were coming from. Mm. Um, the volume of work in that was incredible. And again, that was across all channels and at breakneck speed. So that was huge. But we also worked on lots of other really great projects such as the new Global Vic brand. And Global Vic is our trade agency for Victoria. So they reach right across the world and just do incredible work and we supported them with a really cutting edge beautiful brand and that rollout. We also worked on another project that was great was the new Agriculture Victoria website which is a really beautiful site and it's really complex. The depth of content in that is extraordinary and it ties in so many areas and agriculture is so important to Victoria and so many people mm. use that as a resource and tool and so that you know that was a great project to work on as well. Absolutely. Many of our listeners are creative services managers or, or yes. in-house studio managers. Mm. What's the one piece of advice do you think that you could give them about the importance of building these high performance internal creative teams? Well, I think that you can't deliver great outcomes without great people. So you need them, you know, and um your work will only be as good as the people in your team. And so I guess it's really important to spend the time seeking them out and um, supporting them and then keeping them on board as well. Um, I think it's really important to push for highly creative people, uh, but people that are really productive, that are excellent communicators, that mm. take on responsibility really well um, and that they can cope with pressure too. One of the things that makes our team great and that we really push for is diversity. So diversity yeah. of gender, of age, of culture, of skill, um, of skill type, and also of personality too. So mm. we always think that, you know, a job comes in and we're like, oh, that designer will be great for that. They're going to fit well, but it's not the same designer that's right for every project. So you really mm. need to have a great mix of people and they have to think differently so that they can challenge you too. Um, we like to have a really open team and that we're always looking for ideas and improvements. We're always looking to get better, um, always looking for ways to make our, our business model leaner and simpler, more user focused and client focused. Mm. So people that can help you with that are going to be great. Absolutely. Is there a piece of tech that you guys have perhaps implemented during this whole lockdown that has been a game changer for you? Well, some simple things have really worked for us, actually, and we're in the process of investigating a couple of other big ones, but some little tools that have been mm. just so helpful for us was a little tool called Toggle, which is one that we use just Toggle. to track simple projects. Yeah, it's great. It's really simple. And it's just a quick overview of, of where our projects are, where they're sitting with, etc. And another one is Slack. And that's obviously yeah, really okay. common for heaps of people to use. But that mm. is honestly, sometimes I just have to turn the notifications off. It's pinging so much. But it, <laughs> for a team that's used to just yelling out across the studio space and communicating yeah. constantly, we've needed to recreate that. And so we've been able to do that quite effectively with Slack. It's, mm. it's been great. Love it. You've got one of the, the best views in Melbourne in there at DJPR. And, you know, you've all been home for such a long time now producing all of these projects. I really don't know how you've done it. Um, is there any sign on the horizon that you might be returning into the office? Well, yes, there is. And we will start to go back in. But, you know, it will be a different environment and we're not going to be mm. in there all the time. And to be honest, I think it's great. It's offered our designers more flexibility um, it's also opened up more who we can access to. So there are people around the state that mightn't be locally based that now mm. we're able to work with. Yeah. So, you know, we don't need to have people that are in Melbourne. We can have people no. right through the regions. The entire state is open to us. And that's really fantastic. We've even had interstate designers as well with us now mm. and it's no issue. So um, I think that it has really the long-term benefits for us are enormous. And to be honest, we navigated that shift to home really swiftly and effectively. Um, Nick, one of our fantastic people from Creative Recruiters, nobody steal him. He <laughs> is just brilliant and he helped Ooh. us with that uh, that whole process and we, we couldn't have done yeah. it without him. So 
yeah, it's gone quite smoothly, but it, uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll have some great changes as a result of this situation mm. in the future. The biggest benefit, and you touched on it, is the attitude that's changed to you do not have to be in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever the studio is anymore. And as a recruiter, I've been saying that to the market for years, that if we, if we don't expand it, um, you know, the talent pool gets smaller and smaller mm. and smaller. And the best thing about this is that we've been able to place Sydney people in Melbourne and Melbourne people in Sydney or Brisbane or Hobart, wherever it happens to be. And to hear someone like you who's, you know, at that top of the tree um, being really open to that, you know, even moving forward, I think will be music to a lot of people's ears for sure. Yeah, it's great. Send them our way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> They're on their way, Georgia. They're on their way. All right, look, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really do appreciate it. And um, all the very best and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. It was lovely to chat. Have a great day. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye.